Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make videos for NBA, I make videos for NFL. I will have an NFL video out this week for you guys, I promise. Um, I will hold myself accountable for that promise, so look forward to that. But yeah, all these videos that get posted on this subreddit right here, it's called DF Sports with one S. I make updates with all the news that comes out throughout the day. There was a ton, a ton of news today, very important because the slates do change from these videos. So this will be linked down below. And if you, you can ask me questions up to lock leading up about the slate, anything you need, I will be in here up to lock. Sometimes I'll be in here after the slate as well if you need any questions for like night slate, stuff like that. And then if you are, uh, if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can do so on Twitter right here. Um, are my handles. That'll be linked down below as well. So let's go into my lineup from tonight. I, I am just absolutely shocked. Absolutely shocked from what happened tonight. Um, so let me go over my process. And if you want, you know, more info, my process, my Discord link will be down below where I give you guys a core of four players to play. I, I try to help you guys through the slate. Um, you know, there's private videos, cores, night slate content, showdown content, anything you need. Um, it'll be linked down below. So let me go over my process for tonight. And I am just absolutely bewildered that I didn't absolutely nuke this slate. By the way, I stone bubbled. Uh, not stone bubble, but a few points out of the cash. Firstly, Lakers guys. Oh, also, if you if if you guys played Capella, I, I think I went over the rotation in my video last night of the edge with Capella and Okongwu playing alongside each other. If you look at the Atlanta Hawks minutes, Capella absolutely smashed. He played uh, 34 minutes. Okongwu played 30 minutes. They both did really well for their salaries. So looking at rotations is definitely going to help you. It'll give you an edge for sure. Um, so if any of you guys got to them, good job. Um, but yeah, my process tonight was, I had a really good feeling that LeBron or Anthony Davis was going to sit. I had a really good feeling about it and that happened. And what people in DFS do is they load up and go with the sure thing. And the sure thing today was the Pelicans. We got Rui at low ownership. We got D'Lo at low ownership. We have Anthony Davis sub 30% owned and this is small field, single entry stuff. Um, we, we got the Memphis guys low owned. We have Rose low owned. We have David Roddy low owned. Like, people just go with the sure thing in DFS. It didn't work out for me tonight because everybody nuked on the slate. Absolutely everyone did. But most nights, when you make swaps in DFS and play for the late news and it works out in your favor, more often than not, you are going to have a big, big night. And that's what I try to do. That's how I, I play DFS. I always play for late news. Because you're going to get really good plays at lower ownership than they should be. Like, if we got news that LeBron was going to be out before lock, D'Lo would have been like 50%. Rui would have been like 40%. Anthony Davis would have been like 50%. It would have just been absolutely insane. And like I said, unfortunately, every, everyone nuked. And Najee Marshall and Trey Murphy coming off the bench just absolutely nuked the slate. I... I just once that happened, I, I, I knew I wasn't going to have a big night or I might not have cashed. And I was looking good to have a really big night. And then Giannis just absolutely nuked it. And then Najee Marshall and Trey Murphy are both popular. They just absolutely destroyed the slate. And I had Trey Murphy as a core play today. And once he got um, wasn't starting, I swapped to Dyson Daniels. Just so dumb. Uh, but my core today was Jonas Valanciunas, he smashed. Anthony Davis, he smashed. Brandon Ingram, he smashed. Dyson Daniels. Um, so three out of four on the core had flames. Um, just Dyson just doesn't play. It's so unfortunate. Um, but yeah. Um, Derek Rose, I absolutely loved. He was my favorite Memphis value. Um, David Roddy had a good game. D'Lo was a bit underwhelming for the circumstances. And then Rui's minutes. I don't understand what the Lakers were doing with Rui's minutes. He was the best play on the slate at this ownership. Not even close. So just a bit unfortunate there. But yeah, uh, first losing day in like a week. But um, let's go over this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven game slate for tomorrow, the 14th of December. So we're going to have continued to have Mobley out here. So, 
as you guys know, I've been high on Jared Allen every single slate because with no Mobley, he gets a bump, he gets a usage bump, he gets a minutes bump. Um, his four, his ceiling goes up. Same matchup going up against Boston. Now, we could have Jer uh, Jalen Brown out on the other side, so Boston could change up their lineup here. If he's out, they could go with like Al Horford or Sam Hauser. But um, you're probably going to get him at low ownership again. I think he's a fine tournament play. Like I said, I don't like the matchup. I think the price point's fair. But if he's low owned again, I think he's solid tournament play. Mitchell, Garland don't stand out to me at their respective price points in this matchup. But I think both are fine. They're running a really tight rotation. We also do have Karis LeVert back. Keep an eye on if he, he's going to get a minutes uptick. Because if he goes back to his normal like, 30, 32 minutes a game, then yeah, I definitely have interest in a 5.3k LeVert. Um, <clears throat> so keep an eye on that. That could be something of important. He wouldn't be like a must play, but he would be a fine play. Like if I knew he got 30 minutes tomorrow, he'd definitely be a fine to solid play, but keep an eye on that. Struce definitely priced right with Levert back. And then I'm not going to touch the value. I think my favorite play on Cleveland is definitely going to be uh, Jared Allen there. All right, Boston. So tough spot going up against Cleveland. Keep an eye on the Jalen Brown news. Um, if he's in, I mean, this team in a tough match, of just, it's just hard to gauge, man. Um, Tatum, Brown, Porzingis, um, White, Drew. I mean, they're all in play. They're running a tight rotation. They're all playing huge minutes. My favorite is just going to be Tatum at sub-10K. Had a decent game last game. I think he's a bit too cheap. Um, played 41 minutes as well. I think that was in regulation too. So, going to play huge minutes. We know Boston basically runs like a seven-man rotation basically. So, interest in Tatum. I think everyone else is priced right for my liking, though. Um, and then, like, we know Sam Hauser is going to get run off the bench. He has a playable value. And then Peyton Pritchard, the unbelievable. He was chalk last slate <clears throat> for the worst daily fantasy players in the world. And he just absolutely smashed. And he was chalk. Only played 12 minutes. I'm not going to play Pritchard if everyone's healthy. If Brown's out, then that does change some things. Then I would think Sam Hauser starts. I would assume he would be. If he does, he would stand out as a pretty solid value play. And then you're going to get bumps to guys like Tatum, Porzingis, White, Drew. Um, looking at price points, I think Tatum would be my favorite. And then probably the guards would be my second and third favorites. Porzingis would be fine as well, but they would get a bump too. And then Peyton Pritchard will probably get a boost as well. He would be a playable value. They could also start Horford, but I would assume it would be Hauser. Moving on to Chicago, it's a tough matchup here going up against Miami, but Levine out. We also have Alex Cruz or questionable. If Cruz is out, you can go to a guy like Io. Now, he's been so, so bad, but he did play huge minutes, played close to 40 minutes. He would be a fair value if Cruz is out. Patrick Williams, I think, is priced right. Kobe White's just been phenomenal. You guys know I've been on him every single slate. I haven't played him, but I've liked him every single slate. I'm not going to say no if you want to play him. He's just doing everything for this team. He's also playing huge minutes. He's playing like 40 minutes a game. He's stuffing his stat sheet, um, averaging a ton of potential assists as well, getting a bunch of rebounds. I, I have no issue if you want to keep playing him. I think looking at price points, like it's much easier to just play DeMar, but DeMar will probably be a bit more popular. Um, Vooch, I think he's fine. I, I think my favorites, if I had to rank them, DeMar, White, Vooch, but um, I think all are reasonable options. Um, White's just been phenomenal, but um, I think all are solid. <clears throat> Patrick Williams, like I said, is priced right, and then if Cruz is out, um, I think Io is playable. Um, Craig um, should see low 20s minutes off the bench. Fair value. Don't know if it's necessary to go there. You're going to see some Dalen Terry, but once again, I don't, I don't. he was popular last night. I just didn't understand that. I'm not going to go there. Andre Drummond's priced right. So, yeah, pretty unappealing team, if you ask me. For Miami, so we'll keep an eye on the Josh Richardson news. If he is out, for some reason, we saw Jamal Kane just play a ton tonight, I want to say. Um, pretty sure he played like 28 minutes. He was recalled from the G League or something. Yeah, played 29 minutes. I don't know what that was about, but... Um, or this was from 11-23. Yeah, I, I don't know what that was about. Um, but um, let's go over it. So, I mean, it's an okay spot going up against Chicago. Chicago does play slow, though. Butler, I think, is priced right, but still does have a ceiling. He'll go low owned every slate. If you catch him on his good night where you can go for 50-plus, sure, a fine play. Uh, everyone else, it's just, they all look kind of similar to me. Like Caleb Martin, Duncan, Jackas. I guess Jackas would probably be my favorite from the three, but, um, they're, they're all pretty safe outside of Duncan. Like I think Caleb, Jackas, they're pretty safe plays, but I would say priced about right. 
And then you're seeing Love, Orlando Robinson kind of um, split these center minutes. Uh, if I had to play one, I guess it would be Love, but neither look good at their price points. You also saw some Ty- Thomas Bryant tonight, so it's not really good. And, and then if Josh Richardson plays, he'll play around 25-ish minutes. He's a fine play, but priced right. And then I'm not sure what to make of Jamal Cain's minutes tonight. I, I, I'm really not sure what to make of it. If Jay Rich is out, sure, if you want to go there, that's fine. Uh, I really don't know what to make of it. Um, they ran one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They ran nine, so um, hmm, it's tough. All right, on to Minnesota. So we have Anthony Edwards questionable. We have Jaden McDaniels also questionable. If everyone's in, I mean, everyone's priced up from where people were out. I will say, um, if Ant's not on a limit, which I don't know if he would be, it's hip injury, we'll see. But if Ant's not on a limit, I do like this price point for Ant. So I like Ant if he plays and he's not on a limit. Cat would be priced right. I mean, Rudy Gobert should just be able to absolutely feast here. So I have some interest in Rudy Gobert for tournaments. Um, 7-5 is a fair price. He should be able to feast up against his Dallas front, front court. So I think Gobert is interesting for tournaments. Everyone else is just priced up to the point where they're unplayable for me. NAW 5-7, too pricey. Mike Conley 6-5, too pricey. Nas Reed, we know he's a good point per minute guy and getting like mid twenties minutes. Uh, he still does have a ceiling. I guess I'm okay with him, but um, everyone else definitely a bit too pricey. Um, if Ant's out, I still don't even like much. Like everyone, I guess Rudy Gobert would be my favorite play, and then Cat would be fine. But nine K seems priced right. Um, just not a lot here. Um, but I do like Gobert for tournaments, and then I think Ant I would like quite a bit if he's not on a limit. All right, on to Dallas. Kyrie Irving out. Tim Hardaway Jr. is probable. Derek Jones Jr. questionable. Seth Curry questionable. So if everyone's in, I think Luke at the top looks like the best play, on, best spend up on the slate. He's just play, he he didn't come out of the game in the first half outside of outside of his injury. So I absolutely love Luca here. Um, he was low owned last slate. I don't think he'll be low owned here. Um, tough matchup going up against Minnesota though, but really like Luke at the top. If everyone's in, then it kind of takes it takes like Hardy out of play for me. Grant Williams would look a bit worse. Derek Jones Jr. I think would be fine. Tim Hardaway Jr. is a guy I would like quite a bit though, um, at 6K. But definitely a um, hit if you know guys like Seth Curry, Derek Jones Jr. are in. But still be a fine play. And then I like Lively at 6'3". Not not a good spot going up against Minnesota. But if he he can stay out of foul trouble, he is going to play big minutes. So I have some interest in Lively. And then Exum at 6'6", um, I think would be priced right, but still a fine play. Now, if everyone's out again, then it's a situation where there's a ton to like here. Then I love Luca. I really like Dante Exum. Um, he, he'll be their second go-to guy, playing huge minutes, good point per minute guy, stuffing the stat sheet, which still really like him. Live would look a little bit better. I would really like uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. at 6K. He's just going to have to play huge minutes. He would be too cheap. Grant Williams, I think, would be a solid value. Jaden Hardy will be in the rotation. Um, I would say he's priced right, but would be playable. Prosper didn't play much. So hard to go there. He played one minute. Um, and uh, you'll probably see some AD. Uh, no, he DMP'd. Um, interesting. I thought he would be in the rotation last game. I guess they just ran pretty much like seven guys. Um, so... Yeah, potentially a decent amount to like here with Dallas. Moving on to Brooklyn, tough matchup here. I don't like much now with Dennis Smith Jr. out. I kind of want to see what the Nets finished with minutes-wise tonight. With Dennis Smith Jr. out, you're seeing huge minutes for Spencer Dinwiddie. You're seeing huge minutes, with uh, obviously, for Mikel. He's been playing that many minutes all season long. Um, so I guess I have interest in Dinwiddie. Mikel is always a fine tournament play for me just because he has a high ceiling. Cam Thomas, I would say, is priced right. What they're doing with Nick Claxton's rotation is just absolutely disgusting. He did play 33 minutes tonight, though, um, but I would still say he's priced right. Cam Johnson's priced right. There's just not much here. Um, I guess my favorite play would be Dimwitty or Mikel, but I don't love much at their price points. All right, KCP out. Jamal Murray is probable. We'll monitor what they do with the starting lineup. They could do a number of things. They could start like a Braun. They could start like a Strother. They could do a number of things, so we'll see. I think, you know, Jokic is a good spend up. I think I prefer Luka. Michael Porter Jr. is a bit overpriced with Jamal Murray back. Jamal Murray, I would assume, would be on a limit, so hard to go there. If we get news he's not on a limit, then I do like this price point for Jamal, but I would expect him to be on one. Aaron Gordon's priced right with Jamal Murray. Reggie's a bit pricey. I guess my only interest here is, like, Jokic and then... If for some reason Murray's not on a limit, then sure. And then whoever starts. Like, if they start, like, a 4.2K Christian Braun, I, I do like Braun. 
if they start Strother, he would be a good value. Um, so I, I guess I do like whoever starts for values. Keep an eye on that. OKC at Sacramento. So you got a fast-paced matchup here. So it's a good spot. Um, I think SGA is pretty good spend up. I think I prefer Luka, but um, he's right up there with the rest of them. Um, he's just been phenomenal. Averaging over 30 points a game, stuffing the stat sheet. I mean, yeah, playing big minutes. So, yeah, and nothing bad to say about SGA. Chet Holmgren, um, minutes haven't been great up and down, but good shot blocker, um, solid rebounder, does have a ceiling, um, fine play. And then um, we do have Lou Dort back, so interesting to see what Josh Giddy's minutes are going to be like. Maybe he goes back down to like around 20. I would say he's priced right for getting 25 right now anyway, so not a ton of interest there. And then with Dort back, it's going to kill guys like Casey Wallace at that price point. I guess Dort, I'm actually okay with at uh, 4.3K. So I like Dort for value. It's just up to if he hits his shots or not. And then Isaiah Joel being the rotation, he's a fair value, uh, but more so just a Dart. Sacramento, so we have Trey Lyles is questionable. If he's out, I would assume JaVale McGee um, gets the backup five. He would be an interesting value play just because he's a good point per minute guy. Uh, but Fox, a bonus, they're fine contrarian spend up to me. I think I rank like, you know, SGA above them, potentially Tatum with no Brown. Um, you know, I like Jokic, I like Luka above them, but still in play for tournaments for me. Um, Balik Monk, I like once again. Um, hopefully... Uh, his back game, last game, will lower the ownership on him. Got, got in a massive foul trouble. Picked up like three fouls instantly. Only played 22 minutes. Normally, he's going to play around 30. Uh, he's going to run that second unit. Good point per minute guy off the bench. So, he'll, he'll have the ball in his hands. Decent amount in the second second unit as well. So, pretty high floor if he doesn't get in a random massive foul trouble. So, pretty high on Malik Monk once again here. Keegan Murray had a big game last game. Averaging about 30 minutes a game, I think he's fine. He's probably the safest of this bunch, him, Harrison Barnes. But Harrison Barnes will get benched at times. Kevin Herter will get benched at times. So if I were to play one of these wings, it would probably probably be Kagan Murray. And then, like I said, if Lyles plays, I like Lyles for value. We don't have a ton of value on the slate right now. So Lyles would be a pretty solid value. And then if he's out, you could consider a JaVale McGee. I don't know what to do with this team. <laughs> this team. We'll, we'll see if they play. Um, I don't think we have anything yet on them. Last time I looked. Um, yeah, I don't think we have anything yet on them. So, um, I would expect Keontae George to be ruled out. Oh, he's already ruled out, I think. Um, so, and then... Um, Clarkson's out, cool, and then um, we'll see about Collins. And then Markin, it's a back-to-back, -back, but I would assume he plays here. Um, so with uh, George and Clarkson most likely are out. Um, you know, Collins Sexton, I think, is a solid play of five, so it's just hard trusting this team. Um, if Kelly Olenek starts again, you can go there. It's fine. He had a big game tonight after absolutely crushing my soul the other night. But they can always troll his minutes. Marketing was on a limit tonight. We'll see if he's not on a limit tomorrow. Um, let's see what they, the minutes finished with for these guys. I know uh, Sexton's just absolutely nuked with no George. Um, so I like Sexton. Uh, Chris Dunn, I guess, is in play. What's his price point? Um, I think he's a fair value. It's just disgusting trying to play any of these guys. Um, but yeah, Chris Dunn's in play. I think he uh, got there in, uh, at the end there. I'm not entirely sure. But I like Sexton at 5-7 with the guards out. And then if a Linux starts again, I think he's fine. But trusting any of these guys is just disgusting. Um, we'll wait and see for a lineup. We'll see what they do. And then I'll make updates on Reddit. Brogdon questionable. We have Jeremy Grant out. We have DeAndre Ayton questionable. If everyone's in, I think, you know, the main three guards are fine plays in a good spot. Um, and then if Ayton's in, you know, guys like Walker, Reese would be out of play for me. It would hurt Kamara, it would hurt Thibel. So there wouldn't be much here at all. But if they're out again, then yeah, I really like Sharp. I really like Simons. Would we'll prefer Simons to Sharp. Do up Reese would be a solid value. Kamara would be playable. I don't love the price point, but he'll play big minutes. And then Jabari Walker, I think, would be a solid value. Should get low 20s minutes. Good point per minute guy. And then Thibel at 4 2 would be a fair value as well. So keep an eye on that news. All right, last set of games here, guys, or last game here, guys. So Draymond out. 
I was expecting a lineup change with the Warriors yesterday, or two days ago, I forget, and they just didn't do it, and they finally did it at halftime. I am expecting a lineup change this time, hopefully. I don't know what they'll do. They started Podzemski and Kuminga in the second half. We'll see what they do, but we could have some interesting plays here. Steph always in play for tournaments. I don't love the uh, the matchup going up, up against the Clippers. They could start Chris Paul, I guess, but I think they like him off the bench. Um, we have Draymond Green out. We'll see who starts. If it's like Kaminga, then I like Kaminga. Um, if they start Pods, then Pods would be solid. Um, if Wiggins goes back to the bench, unplayable. Clay Thompson is just dusty. I don't love the price point. We'll see what they do with the starting lineup. I, I, I would be expecting a lineup change tomorrow. But my, my, my main interest here would be guys like whoever starts. Like they could start like a Darts, they could start Kaminga, they could start Pods. We'll see. They could even start Chris Paul. We'll see. But um, could have some plays there. Paul George is questionable. If everyone's in, then, you know, I think Kawhi, Paul George, Harden are fine plays. Uh, they got priced up a bit, so it wouldn't be, you know, solid. They'd be okay as, like, a last man's in for me. I don't know why Westbrook's that price. Zubac at 6'4 seems priced right. Pal seems priced right. Man seems priced right. There wouldn't be much here. But if Paul George is out that does change some things, then I really like Kawhi. I really like Harden. If they start a guy like Pal, he would be solid. Man gets a bump. He's fine. And then, I don't know, might even see a bit more Kobe Brown, maybe. Um, but, yeah, keep an eye on that. I'll make updates. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.